this is one of the places I would always head for on my bike. There's a kind of uncertainty here. Whenever you walk past this church, which is constantly changing, and then you walk down and you, you end, up, end up in a coastline, you never know what you're going to find. And you never know if your favourite tree is going to be there. It's a creative kind of loss. There's a melancholic side to this place that only time can give you, really. The lashing of the waves are a kind of a sequencing of time. The speed at which the erosion happens almost in human time kind of beds you into geological time yourself. On the cliff edge, there's often roots and tendrils coming down and the way the trees you sit in the sand is so sculptural. And I've often drawn them and now I've realised that they are deep inside the sculptures. It's definitely something that's now embedded literally in me. When I was leaving Butley, I, I felt I was really scared about you know, leaving nature behind. But I realised that it had been planted way, way before. That actually sitting here sealed off from it, you realise it's not nature influencing you, it's you filtering through nature. And it's inside you and actually you are it. The work at the moment is very much more about submission to being me. This incredible way of extending the drawing process into sculpture where I'm just fastening a figure to a plinth with rope and string. Constantly just tie, pull, tie, pull in a kind of a neurotic kind of need to fasten something down as secure as possible. Those knots and those nervous ticks are kind of left in these sculptures and then they're put into bronze. And it's much like a footprint was left by a, a, a hominid 800,000 years ago. It was just a footprint, it meant nothing, absolutely nothing. And it's just revealed 800,000 years later and it kind of changes the world. And it's a bit like that, it's in a small sort of domestic way. The amplification of a gesture made large is extraordinarily significant. There's a kind of a history of the male sculpture, this kind of hero, which is no longer relevant really. And I think that my sculptures, if you want to engage in the human form and the male form, one has to deal with that. I'm finding that the figures that I'm making now are wholly aware of this history. The figures now percolate doubt. A sculpture that's come through this year is called Arba, which is this um, the Thousand Tides figure, which I've never been able to resolve, never been able to work out outside of the landscape what to do with him. Is now levitating, is now suspended in um, sticks and trees and, and growth. Some of it pierces through him, some of it surrounds him, and he's in a canopy. And, and it's wonderful that it felt immediately right the minute I suspended him in this way. And it brought up a whole load of thoughts about the figure. I've just been given this 26 foot high figure, uh, been commissioned to, to do the sculpture. 
it's going to be placed in Suffolk and um, the whole, whole landscape is going to change around it. My references aren't really of a classical type, they're a different kind of history, they're kind of more uh, Neolithic, they're kind of uh, primeval, they're earthbound. This guy is a creature of earth. He's going to be contemplating a serene landscape, the water, after a kind of violent birth, uh, and a birth of kind of metamorphosis, really. So this figure really starts as tree and turns to kind of, kind of, kind of man later on. So to marry that up with a lake and what this guy is kind of looking at at the end is, is going to be quite wonderful. I'll come here and I'll take something that will only be here for a fleeting moment, like a piece of material, organic material. And then my process that I use, I can make it more permanent. I can give it another life. And that's really interesting how the sculptures themselves can actually partake of this process of erosion and time and actually sometimes defy it.